we started studying very, very closely the paper record system that is used in DRC. Um, how, how were healthcare workers capturing public health data on paper? And then how were they transmitting it on another piece of paper to the health zone? And then at what happened at the health zone with those data? Well, then they were being manually entered into a more kind of open MRS system called DHIS. We were looking for potential off the shelf products that we thought we might be able to adapt to serve this purpose. That's when we began to kind of iteratively develop this app that essentially mimics the, all of the paper steps. So that's sort of the why we decided to, to, to create this technology. You know, we think that the data problem and the community level data problem is so fundamental uh, to being able to address any other problems effectively. We also have some other programs that we're working on in, um, in partnership with the business school at the University of Chicago. It's called the Booth School of Business. We have been working on some uh, supply chain modeling for really hard to reach, really hard to service communities. And so we've been using our data sets, our community level data sets to kind of create these models about how we might be able to bring certain types of products into these very rural, very fragile communities where that really hasn't been feasible before. The first point that I would like to make is that data should not be elite, okay? <laughs> um, and, and that is because of the very simple fact that where data ultimately come from, right, should be from the community, right? Because, you know, where, you know, what does it mean to come up with a public health statistic? It means that we've aggregated, right, a significant number of observations, right, throughout the population that allows us to make an estimate about disease prevalence. We also know, right, that disease prevalence and certain burdens, right, that face communities are very heterogeneous. For us, that should inform everything, right? You know, so the policymakers need to recognize that only through really accu accurate granular data sets at the level of all of these heterogeneous communities within a region or a country will allow us to design the most impactful and effective policies. We also recognize that there is a phenomenon right now in the world of kind of M health. Just as we have, you know, you know, heterogeneity within countries, we have profound heterogeneity in between countries. It is it is very hard to introduce digital tools that can be adopted and where healthcare workers actually see their value and where their productivity and is enhanced rather than detracted from, um, it's very hard, right, to achieve that balance. So we early on made the decision that we weren't trying to create a tool to scale across all of Africa. We wanted to make a tool that worked really well for the Democratic Republic of the Congo. So if we create the right kinds of tools that are going to give us an accurate picture of what's going on there, then we can make very significant um, progress in terms of decreasing things like malaria mortality, you know, you know, infant mortality due to other causes, maternal mortality, food insecurity, etc. One feature of our technology is that we, we don't need mobile phone connectivity um, and we don't need electricity because we can install these solar charging units at health centers 
And we have a feature in our app that allows us to grab all of the public health data from one tablet to another using Bluetooth. Then it becomes even easier, right, to use our technology because then healthcare workers can upload their own data locally. This idea of the problem of data flow is something that I have discussed, you know, over many years now with the people that I work with. Um, in the Ministry of Health. And so this idea now that there is a uh, sort of an agency that's devoted to thinking about all of the pieces of the puzzle to help to improve that public health, you know, data flow, um, as well as appropriate management of those data um, is I think a great development. So, you know, we're really hoping that we'll be able to um, also find a community of, of practitioners locally where we can, you know, work together to, you know, enhance certain parts of, of, of the problem. It's important to recognize that we should use different metrics to measure different types of impact. Sometimes also during the course of doing experiments, we also learn about different indicators, right? Different variables, different potential, you know, out um, endpoints that also might be important for us to take up and consider at a different time or to reanalyze data in light of things that we learn just from carrying out the experiment. So if we can get a bunch of health centers converted and we see, you know, significant data flow, that would be a great first step. But it doesn't end there. Right, because then what would we want to look at? Well, we would want to look at accuracy. We would want to look more closely at those data that are flowing. And we would want to make sure, okay, well, do all these data make sense? You know, are people, you know, entering in information correctly? Are there ways in which we can make slight changes to the app where healthcare workers are cued, you know, to answer specific questions in a specific way? Um, so for me, I see a sort of this arc of, you know, of what we're trying to achieve over time. The novel coronavirus presented, you know, a, a new layer of, you know, challenge certainly, but that mindset of, you know, flexibility, figuring out how to get around, you know, barriers and issues, it's a mindset that we've, uh, you know, always had to have in order to operate in the environment where we operate. The most important lesson that I have learned um, is be humble. <laughs> Test what you think you know until you have the kind of rigorous, you know, as objective as possible kind of sources, material, experience, you know, don't project. <laughs> don't, don't think that, you know, because, you know, you're really good at these five things in some other context that you can automatically apply, you know, those, that methodology in, in a new context. We're almost done uh, with all of the clinical related data. And now we're doing the last bit, um, which is the administrative related data that is collected at the level of the health center. So that means, you know, inventory management, um, you know, HR uh, registers, you know, fees that the that the health center is um, supposed to be collecting. You know, I was there talking with the various technical people in the National Ministry of Health about a making sure we have the most up to date paper forms that we're working from that we have identified collaborators at the national level. Um, that allow us to ask kind of deep questions as we sort of say, okay, so what are you really trying to capture in this column here? You know, this, this register has all these columns and 
And we need to deeply understand what is the question being asked? What's the datum? You know, how does it code right into the report? Um, you know, what is the actual uh, kind of set of steps and the set of thinking, right, that goes in to each of these forms. And, and so that's what we're tackling now. And, um, and, you know, and that's kind of what's going to keep us occupied for the immediate future. <laughs>